It's been a while. It's been a long while. I don't really know where to start with this, honestly. Um, I haven't sat in front of the camera in so long. This feels so weird. I, it's been so long, I feel so bad. Like, a lot has happened in the past few months. Um, so I figured I'd make a video talking about what has happened and like why I've disappeared. Um, and as you can see, I have a different background and everything is in disarray. That's because I just moved. Um, so I will have to share that as well, I guess. Um, I've had so many of you guys reach out on my other social media platforms to like ask if I was okay and it's it's really it's really heart touching you know um it feels really good to know that there are people out there that don't even know me but yet they care so much you know and I'm very grateful for that because I don't have a lot of people around me that actually care so um to see that I have this many people that care enough to where they're finding me on different social media websites to make sure that I'm okay is very it's really heartwarming um I don't really know where to start so I guess I'm just gonna start at like a couple months ago um beginning of July I started really declining mentally really bad um even though I'm a couple years removed from the abuse, the anniversary events still um, cause me to struggle a lot, you know? So um, the abuse I went through, I don't really want to specify right now. I, can, I was going to do that in a different video, but um, it was a while. It was for a year straight, over a year straight but a lot of it happened over the summer. So June, July, August, I have a lot of anniversary events, a lot of severe ones that um, really do weigh on me more than the others, you know? I stopped my medicine for a couple different reasons and it showed in my moods and the severity of it. I was on multiple different meds antidepressants, anti-anxieties, mood stabilizers, benzos, um, and I just, I just cold turkey them. I didn't tell anyone, and usually I don't tell anyone, and like, if you guys know, cold turkeying Zoloft, not that good. Uh, it didn't really affect me at the time, but after about a month or so, it really started to show. Um, I put on a couple pounds and it triggered a lot of emotions because of my previous anorexia. Um, I had anorexia really badly a couple years ago. I lost around 70 pounds in a year. Um, I also had a couple changes going on at home, which just like added stress into the mix of um, everything going on in July. So, as much as I like to be independent and strong, you know, my disabilities were really starting to weigh on me, and I knew that. Um, the emotional turmoil caused me to isolate from everybody for a good bit. Um, the topic of PTSD in the disabled community is talked about a lot, but I feel like there are aspects of it that get overlooked. Um, symptoms that come along with it are viewed as shameful or taboo. Um, and as much help as I get, I still feel just as helpless and out of control and that scares me. Being out of control of your own mind and your reactions is scary, especially when you know that there's consequences behind them. Um, <clears throat> no amount of therapy or medication can change the fact that I have PTSD. And as much as you prepare for when you're triggered, it doesn't take away the instinctual trauma response when you are triggered. 
July 16th. I had just gotten home from a long day at work and I was decompressing in my room. Without going into much detail, there was an interaction between myself and someone I held very close to my heart over the phone. And um, it changed everything, you know? Betrayal is something that I've always taken pretty personally. Um, I was heartbroken and I couldn't understand why it happened. Um, the person tried deflecting the blame and said um, something to me that triggered my PTSD. It was fight or flight and my brain chose fight. I lost my mind, screaming and crying. I felt so out of control. I felt helpless. I felt hurt. I felt enraged. Um, and at the end of the episode, I was left with a few holes in the walls in my room and my door split down the middle. Bruises and bloody knuckles. The same person who had betrayed me called the cops without me knowing because they thought I was going to do something bad. They thought I was going to um, possibly take my own life and they didn't want that on their conscience knowing that they would have caused that from their own actions and it could have easily been prevented. Um, I was Baker acted later that night. I later spent seven days in an inpatient treatment facility to get stable on my meds and start therapy again. A week after I was released, I found out that I had a boxer's fracture in my hand and a broken wrist from the episode. Um, it was scary, you know? I was scared of myself. I've never had an episode that bad before, and everybody thinks of PTSD as just flashbacks and nightmares, but nobody talks about the raw emotions that come from it. Nobody talks about the helplessness that leads you to suicide. Nobody talks about living in constant fear. Nobody talks about the aggression that comes out when you're triggered because your body's trying everything it can to prevent another traumatic event. And that just kind of made me realize that that's my purpose, you know? Um, that's why I come here and talk about my disabilities with no filter, to spread awareness, to talk about what other people will not. Um, I'm gonna show you guys my knuckles here. Um, so as you could see, like these are fine and they're defined, but these, like the definition kind of drops off. I broke right here and right here and damaged the cartilage right here, as well as um, if you see like right here, there's nothing sticking out. My wrist bone right here <laughs> broke and is sticking out a little now. It's like a permanent thing. Anyways. <laughs> Um, the past two months, I've just given myself time to get stable on my medicine and, um, improve my mental health. We just moved into a new house, as you guys can see, so I'm trying to put my life back together again. Um... I also brought a newer Nissan Rogue, which I am very proud about because all the cars I've ever had have been like a couple thousand, like two, three thousand dollars. But this one, like I have a decent car payment, but it's very cute. Um, I'll probably give a car tour soon because I'm obsessed with the way it's set up. I set it up for the dogs and my dog training because I do dog train professionally. Um, I feel like you guys would like that. Um, on the plus side, I've started continuing my education recently. Um, I'm applying to get my AKC CGC evaluator certification, as well as my CPDTKA. Um, I've been excelling at the dog training facility that I work at. There are five locations for my company in total, um, and I'm one of three people that train service dogs out of all the locations. 
and one of two people outside of the owner that trains scent work at all the locations. Um, I'm about to be promoted to head trainer and I'm the youngest on my team over all five locations. Um, so I think I'll be able to say that I'm proud of myself. I'm gonna start releasing packages soon probably um, that you guys can buy and it's just, it'll use your preference of either balance training or purely positive um, because I do understand and respect the aspects of both. Um, and inside of it, it'll break down the history and the psychology of dog training, how to find an ethical trainer, um, because there's a lot of them that are messed up. I can tell some stories about that. Um, and tips and tricks to like train your own dog. Um, in the future, I plan on adding a series on training your service dog, um, start to finish. And it'll include clips of me teaching my dogs the same things from the start with them not knowing anything. So with Leilani, um, we've only had, we've only started scent games yet and behavior interruptions. Um, but I've gotten clips of those. So I will literally be able to show you guys start from finish, like the raw clips of my dog not knowing anything to being completely fully trained. Um, I'll also do videos there where you can, I'll walk you guys through on how to find um, a dog fitted for service work and one that's not just fitted for it, like, yeah, it would be good, but a dog that would actually excel, you know, um, because I feel like a lot of people have washouts because they don't know exactly what to look for or they have a rough idea, but there's certain nuances that get overlooked. Um, certain nuances that even I overlooked, like with Daisy, although Daisy's case was, um, I'd have to explain that, but basically I got really sick after I got her, I was in and out of the hospital. And um, so I under socialized her and then that paired with the iffy genetics, which I knew she had iffy genetics, but the plan was for me to um, not necessarily flood her, but definitely socialize her a good bit and hopefully work past it, you know? And then of course I had other plans for Daisy if that didn't work out, you know? I strive to keep it as real as possible with you guys because I want you guys to succeed just as I am. Um, anyways, I don't wanna keep you guys here for too long. So thank you all for watching and supporting me through everything or if you're new here. Thank you for joining. I promise it'll get a lot better soon. Um, I'm gonna start vlogging and posting more often soon. I just have to get everything settled because of the recent changes. I have to get my room set up and continue my work because I do work like 35 hours a week, which is very hard when you have pots, but I'm doing it, so it's fine. It's fine. Um, so thank you guys all for watching. Um, I'll see you guys later, I guess.